Welcome to the last midweek moment of 2023. Today is the feast of St. John the Evangelist, and so we will begin with a prayer in his honor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who through the blessed Apostle John have unlocked for us the secrets of your word, grant, we pray, that we may grasp with proper understanding what he has so marvelously brought to our ears. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Again, please hit like and subscribe so that we can get the word of God out there to a larger audience. Thank you again for paying attention to the announcements that are scrolled on the screen. I want to highlight two announcements in particular. One, due to the Christmas holiday, our 50-50 raffle drawing for December will be part of the first midweek moment of January. Secondly, please remember our Mass schedule for this weekend and New Year's Day. December 30th, Saturday, Confessions and Mass as usual. Sunday morning, December 31st, Masses at 7.30, 9.30, and 11.30 a.m. Please note that there will be no 6 p.m. Mass on December 31st. Then on Monday, January 1st, Mass will be at 9 a.m. The parish office will also be closed on Monday, January 1st. As we come to the close of this year, I wanted to take this opportunity to repeat the message I shared in the bulletin this past weekend. I just wanted to make sure that the invitation I extended in the bulletin reaches as many people as possible. As we have entered this Christmas season, I want to share again my hope and prayer for us as a parish community. And my hope and prayer for our parish this Christmas, as well as in the new year, is simply that we might get to know one another, one another better. We are in our 50th anniversary year. We have entered into a year-long celebration of giving thanks for 50 years of being a parish family. With every celebration this year, we are filled with the hope, anticipation, and excitement of looking forward to many more years of praying well teaching the faith, and living the faith as a parish family. We are grateful to the parishioners who helped to build the parish 50 years ago, many of whom are still a part of our parish family. We are grateful to the parishioners who cur currently call St. Julie their spiritual home. And we are excited to meet the generations of parishioners still to come who will bring the parish family into a future that is still unseen. Our parishioners of 50 years helped to build, helped to establish the parish we know today. To those brave pioneers, we owe a huge debt of gratitude. The parish has been bringing the mystery of the incarnation to life in this part of Tinley Park for, t for five decades. Again, this is thanks to the parishioners who heard the call of God to establish and form a faith community to help proclaim the good news. Many of these parishioners are still a vibrant part of our family today. From their efforts, we have inherited a faith community that has been known for its welcoming atmosphere and strong in hospitality. We also have a faith community that has remained generous in responding to the needs of those who are less fortunate. We are, of course, blessed as well with the families and individuals who have joined the parish community in more recent years. They are the ones who are shaping our present reality. Just like the people who first built the parish, our current generation of parishioners are those who are bringing their own time, talent, and treasure to help build up the parish. We are grateful for their efforts in keeping the parish faithful to its mission to spread the message of Jesus. But in gratitude, we also celebrate the future generations that will eventually make up the parish family in the distant as well as the not-so-distant future. Some of those future generations are currently very young, and we, 
and not yet in school. They are the ones whose joyful cries we hear in church during Sunday Masses. They keep their parents on their toes with their energy. Of course, there are also future generations who are not yet even a glimmer in the eyes of their parents. And so we anticipate their advent with the same sense of gratitude as we have, as we have for all of God's many blessings on our parish of 50 years. Still, my hope and my prayer is that generations will get to know one another more and more. Sometimes our human nature makes us creatures of habit. Namely, we stick to the people we know and never branch out of our comfort zones. We run the risk of never getting to know one another as a family of faith if we never venture to interact with the people we know only by face. This is my hope and prayer for our parish community. The mystery of the Incarnation is a simple yet powerful expression of God's desire to be very much involved in, our, in the lives of every, of every human being who, is, who are the greatest of his creation. God became human so that we would never feel that God is a distant deity who has no interest at all uh, with, uh, with, his, uh, with his creatures. On the contrary, God became human precisely because he wants to make his home with the human race. God proves this on a very daily basis. God knows us by name. God knows every detail of our lives. This is not because God wants us to, wants, well, God uses his knowledge to control, or to, to control us, but rather God simply wants us to know that he values us so much that God truly wants to make his home with us. God simply asks that we desire the same when it comes both to our relationship with him and with one another. In order to do this, we need to reflect deeply on how well we know the people who make up our own family of faith. Again, we have the pioneer generation of parishioners. They know each other very well. They have formed friendships and connections with one another that have remained strong through the years. The current generation of parishioners have done the same thing among themselves. However, my question to all of us is simply, have we come to know one another? As we celebrate the Christmas mystery with the new year ahead of us, I invite and encourage us to make it an aim to meet and know one another in the way that God intends. And so I challenge us weekly to approach one or two people that we may not know. We may know their faces. They may even be new faces we have never seen before. But I invite us to take the opportunity during this anniversary year to approach one another and besides their names, perhaps simply ask, why do you come to St. Julie's? And then venture even more, and talk about how each of you have managed to fit God and prayer into your lives, or the struggles you encounter in trying to make time for God in our very busy days. And then I would even have us ask each other about the ways we express our Catholic identity to the world. Listen to one another with curiosity and a genuine desire to know the other person. Do this every week and imagine just how many new people we might come to know. Moreover, we can just imagine how much more vibrant and dynamic our parish might become and how we might face the coming years with an even, even more renewed hope, anticipation, and excitement. As we make room for our Savior both in our hearts and in our homes, I pray that we may learn to be more like God, who has come to make his home among us. 
And again, as a parish family, we ask the intercession of Augustus Tolton as we pray for the healing of one of our sick members, Julia, who is a teenager in our parish. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, we give you thanks for your servant and priest, Father Augustus Tolton, who labored among us in times of contradiction, times that were both beautiful and paradoxical. His ministry helped lay the foundation for a truly Catholic gathering in faith in our time. We stand in the shadow of his ministry. May his life continue to inspire us and imbue us with that confidence and hope that will forge a new evangelization for the church we love. Father in heaven, Father Tolton's suffering service sheds light upon our sorrows. We see them through the prism of your Son's passion and death. If it be your will, O God, glorify your servant, Father Tolton, by granting the favor we now request through his intercession, the healing of Julia, so that all may know the goodness of this priest whose memory looms large in the church he loves. Complete what you have begun in us, that we might work for the fulfillment of your kingdom. Not to us the glory, but glory to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, and our Lord. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are our God, living and reigning forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you again for joining us. I wish you a very happy New Year weekend, and again, see you soon.